Hey, welcome back. There's two of us here, so it must be Friday, and this must be Super Start Select. Welcome. After a week of bitter trials, evolution, rivalry, threatened to tear Gamespot apart, we're all friends again. Never have we come so close to breaking each other's trigger fingers, all to save a spot on a leaderboard. But finally, we've learned that friendship is the real gold medals. Oh yeah, guys, I beat your time zone elevation again. I'll so kill you. In today's show, there'll be a peek at the gorgeous debut trailer for a little game called Reset and new free Portal 2 DLC. Get back to work. Then the internet's Mark Walton goes on a video safari, hunting down the finest and funniest end credit sequences in gaming. And to round it off, a bracing shot of your comments telling us what's what. All that and nothing else coming right up. It's time for the sexy new trailer of the week. Danny already covered off the first look in video at Crisis 3, but it's not the only debut trailer to launch this week, and not the only one featuring a city reclaimed by Mother Nature. Kinda gorgeous looking? Yeah, we couldn't agree more ourselves. What we're looking at here is the first showing of Reset, a new title from new studio Theory Interactive. It features this rather lonely looking mechy robot fella taking what looks like a much needed sit down on a pretty expensive and sexy looking sports car. Now gameplay and story hypotheses aside, what's really interesting is the little bit of spiel from Theory Interactive in the trailer's description. Everything you see in the trailer is straight from the in-game engine. No up textures, geometry or effects. What you see is what you will get except hopefully a little bit better since we're not even in alpha yet. Pretty exciting stuff if that's truly all in game, but what engine is it running? Well, according to Gamer Sutra, we're looking at a brand new bit of tech. In their report, we hear that former FutureMark employees Alpo Oksahayu and Miko Kalinen are responsible for the founding of Theory Interactive, and it's these two who've created the brand new engine Praxis we see at work in the trailer. Oksahayu went on to explain to Gamer Sutra why they chose to build it from scratch. The trailer is made entirely of in-game material, and I mean all assets, effects, everything, period. Miko is quite the guru when it comes to tech. We knew that we couldn't achieve the right kind of atmosphere using third-party engines. And of course, DIY stuff is cheap when working with a bootstrap budget. Well, as gorgeous as we can expect Reset to be, we'll be looking at a cooperative single-player experience. The developers point out the game will focus on story and atmosphere, featuring free roaming, exploration and puzzle solving, as you go back in time to help yourself out. Well, it sounds pretty promising, but what do you make of it? Let us know in the comments, and head to the link on screen now to get a look at that trailer in full. Second in the news, Valve has announced a new wadge of free downloadable content is coming to its peerless puzzler Portal 2. Even better, the DLC will mean a steady stream of further portal hopping content because the content is a creation tool that'll let you make test chambers of your own without ever leaving the game. And never cut corners. Well, that's a corner cutting machine. We obviously cut them there. It's called the Perpetual Testing Initiative and, says Valve, with it you can easily create, share and play brand new portal tests. The Perpetual Testing Initiative DLC will be out on May 8th for PC and Mac. There's sadly no word on a version for the consoles, but hey, them's the brakes. These Photoshop-like Portal 2 creation tools were first announced back in October, shortly after the first haul of free DLC. That was the cooperative peer review content, as you might recall. The upcoming Puzzle Maker can directly publish maps to the Steam Workshop where you can browse, choose and vote on them. Also selected puzzles will be downloaded and installed inside Portal 2 automatically. It's like they say, give a man a DLC and he plays for a day. Teach a man to make DLC and he'll play for a lifetime. Or until Valve puts out Half-Life 3, whichever. Mark Walton is a lot of things. Exotic snack enthusiast, certificated taxidermist, Pirate. But quitter he is not. He finishes video games all the time. So many games. So many games. Which means he sees a lot of end credits, which in turn makes him ideally placed to tell you about the best video game end credits our glorious hobby has to offer. And here they are. The humble credit sequence has long been a mainstay of cinema, letting moviegoers know that, yes, this film was made by real people, with names and weird job titles that sound a bit like sex acts. Best boy, cable puller, assistant Jimmy Jib operator. Oh. 
Of course, credit sequences were also incredibly dull. No one wants to sit through 10 minutes of scrolling text in a darkened room. Frankly, the only practical purpose they serve is so you don't have to look at the faces of the sad weirdos that populate cinemas while you make a hasty exit, or to tip your popcorn over the guy in front of you before legging it. Cheese it! This tradition has made its way into video games, except the credits are even longer and the job titles are even weirder. But to simply scroll a list of text misses the point of the medium. It's meant to be interactive. Fortunately, some games have made more of the credit sequence, making them as much a part of the game as all the interactive action that came before it. But which games do it best? Sit back, relax, and enjoy this collection of 13 of the best video game credit sequences around. Is it a game? Is it interactive art? Who knows? But if floating on a breeze and collecting petals is your idea of a day well spent, then Flower fits the bill nicely. Its credit sequence continues the arty theme, letting you float your way through the names of developers while listening to some plinky piano tunes. Mmm, pretentious. Only real men get to enjoy the interactive credits of Rayman Origins, which appears after completing the majorly tricky Land of the Dead bonus level. Now you can destroy the names of those hard-working devs that made the game. Take that, core game level programmer David Punsett. Yeah, getting to the end of the movies means playing through the actual game, which was enough to make you want to claw your own eyes out. Still, if you made it that far, you were treated to this lovely montage of the development team acting silly, including Peter Molyneux stroking a cat. It almost makes up for the fact the game was balls. Almost. Explosion Man does away with the scrolling credits for an astonishingly absurd sequence featuring a real-life Explosion Man punching developers in the face, which is set to a falsetto fueled cock rock soundtrack. I'm not sure what they were smoking when they came up with this one, but I'd imagine doing so makes this at least 30-40% to 40 funnier as a result. For something less random and altogether more adorable, make sure you make it to the end of Plants vs Zombies, which features a sunflower and a zombie horde singing a catchy little ditty about petal eating and being, you know, dead. So cute. Only the best Guitar Hero 3 players get this ending. Complete the game on Expert and you get the chance to play Dragon Force's ludicrously cheesy epic through the fire and the flames as the credits roll. Trying to play through it gives you just enough time to realise you've completely wasted your life playing a fake instrument when you could have been playing a real one and impressing girls. Think about it. As if there wasn't enough ass kicking in Devil May Cry 3, the end credits give you another chance to bring the pain by pitting you against an endless wave of enemies while those lovely developer names scroll. Video game violence for the win! Vanquish was an excellent and very Japanese take on the third person shooter. It's a shame that nobody actually bought it. But hey, if you did and you made it through to the end, you were treated to a pretty cool space shooter where developer names floated by on explodable asteroids. If you want customers to pay attention to your hard-working team, this is the way to do it. I love Sam & Max. It was, and still is, one of the funniest games I've ever played. Plus, it too lets you do something other than scratch your balls while you watch the end credits. You can shoot stuff in a fairy ground style shooting gallery, complete with a silhouette cutout of famous LucasArts characters. Look, there's a tentacle! As if trying to balance a monkey and a ball for several hours wasn't enough, Sega threw one more challenge at you with the end credits. While you desperately try to collect more delicious bananas, developer names fall from the sky, making it very tricky to make your way through. In fact, it's so tricky that I rage quit and paid no attention to the developer names at all. Nice work, Sega. It's odd to think that a serious action beat-em-up like God Hand would feature a fully choreographed dance scene in the credits. Then you remember that you've just spent your time trying to crush enemies with a giant floating hand. See? Makes sense now. Speaking of dancing, everyone's favourite witch slash ass kicker, Bayonetta goes for broke in the end credits by draping herself around a pole and getting a groove on. Oh, and there's a bit where you can actually play the game and beat the crap out of more enemies while the credits roll. 
But that's not what you're thinking about, is it? You sick bastard. This was a triumph. The greatest end sequence of all time? Well, it's not interactive, but it features one of the best video game songs of all time. It's so good that you don't actually mind sitting there while watching the credits roll. And that, my friends, is an amazing achievement. We salute you, Portal. Keep on rocking. Because we can. For the good of all of us, except the ones who are dead. But there's no sense crying over every mistake. You just keep on trying till you run out of cake. And the science gets done, and you make a neat plan for the people who are still alive. Last, but by no means least of all, in fact, last and most, is the feedback part of the show, my favourite and yours. Sure, it keeps us here after hours, and sure, finding complete sentences is harder than space diamonds, but we relish every bit of digital word ink. You guys commit to the pages of Start Select History. And this week, you guys outdid yourselves. Speaking on his new studio's ambitions, Robert Bowling claimed that nothing matters as much as a game's universe, with experiences and game mechanics coming second. GameSpot user Platinum Paladin isn't completely convinced it's the market-smashing battle plan Dr. Bowling would have us believe. I can understand a developer wanting to focus on a specific attribute, i.e. gameplay, visual, story, experiences, or use of hardware, but it worries me when they're willing to list multiple aspects in descending order of importance. Game mechanics in bronze position doesn't fill me with confidence either. But you know what? It looks like Narianne Robinson retains faith in the former modern warfarer. It's not really as crazy as it sounds to say, put the gameplay mechanics last. Think about a game like Amnesia, for example. Popular enough to go viral, made millions, and really, it doesn't have anything that remotely resembles a fresh gameplay mechanic. What made the game was its environments and the experiences in them. Hey, good point. Last week also brought the huge relief of news that Prey 2 is in fact super not cancelled. Though we won't be seeing it soon either, with publisher Bethesda citing reasons like quality standards and unsatisfactory progress and alien sex minigame too graphic, among other things, except not the last one. But guys like Krishna V found the news to be pretty great. Get out of my way. Waiting for a well-prep prey is a better deal than getting my hands on an untested version of it. So far this year hasn't been so good on quality of games. Bethesda, take your time, but please make it count. And in a rare twist of user feedback, GameSpotter Ectonator is all ten thumbs for game delays. I think it's good that developers have started delaying games rather than bringing them out heavily buggy. We honestly don't know what you're talking about. Bethesda know nothing of these game bugs of which you speak. Though it is worth noting rumours, courtesy of an unnamed Shack news source, that the delay was due to a contract dispute between publisher and studio, user Ob's family at least feels like it's a breath of fresh air in an age of stinky launch strategies. Good on Bethesda for the refusal to release Prey 2 this calendar year. In an age of licensed game mega publishers voraciously pushing for early releases and unfinished sports games, I find this to be refreshing news. And with that, we've reached the end of the broadcast. Return to your homes and await further instructions. This message will repeat in two hours, so stay tuned to this wavelength. Remember, save water, don't inhale the dust, and human flesh is best cooked medium rare. We'll see you on the other side. The upcoming puzzle maker can directly publish maps to the Steam Workshop. At one point you did say cam instead of can, I think. Really? <laughs> That's because I'm thinking of cam, obviously. <laughs> okay. Pirate. 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 <laughs> Pirate. Pirate. <laughs> Pirate. Oh no, the word. <laughs> okay. My mouth can't make any other movement. <laughs> Pirate. Pirate. I broke the word. <laughs> no. Oh, God. During an exam once, I yeah. thought about the word have for so long that I couldn't spell it anymore. <laughs> All True right. story. Reverse, yeah. It's like H A F? That's not right. H A V? That's stupid. H double A V? There's no way. <laughs> Have. Hey. Nope. That can't be it. 
quality standards and unsatisfactory progress and alien sex minigame too graphic, among other things, except not the last one. But guys like Krishna V found the news to be pretty great. Good on Bethesda for the refusal to release pay, pay to? Pay to. Pay to. <laughs> okay, pay harder. Today's episode of Start Select has been brought to you by the letter 7. And the number dollar. For more educational content, click up here for further Start Select episodes. And for other learnings, click here for GameSpot. We're going to go back to our work jobs now. <laughs>